Okay, so I'm asked I'm asked a question tw- twice. All right. So the first question, name a and please, please try not to look at don't look at your phones and all that. But we'll know if you're doing it, looking up answers. But anyway, name a starting pitcher, an MLB pitcher from 1990 to 2010 that would have the best chance of striking out Mike Trout all four times he goes to bat. Not named Randy Johnson, Roger Clemens, or Nolan Ryan. I'm going to ask that question one more time. Name a starting pitcher from 1990 to 2010, in between that time, that would have the best chance of striking out Mike Trout all four times. Not named Randy Johnson, Roger Clemens, or Nolan Ryan. TJ, you have up to 30 seconds to come up with your answer. Wow. I'm ready. Wow thing. All right. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go now. I'm going to go with a sleeper pick, and maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I'm going to go uh, with the professor, Kyle Hendricks, from uh, the Chicago Cubs. I believe he led the uh, National League in ERA just, uh, a couple of years back and whatnot. And the reason why I picked him is because he's not your prototypical pitcher of the 2000s. He's not going to throw 100, 102 miles an hour. He doesn't have that type of fastball. So I think he, he's able to keep people off guard a little bit. He has uh, great control. A lot they call him, you know, a, a young Greg Maddox. Uh, so I think he'll be able to, you know what I'm saying, keep Trout off his toes a little bit. Like I said, he had a great ERA uh, coming into uh, the last few years and had a decent strikeout rate, too. So I'm going to go with Kyle Hendricks to be a little bit different. All right. Alex, it's on you. Let's go now. You know what? He should have stuck in the ATL because I'm going to go with Greg Maddox. <laughs> if you look at his time with the Chicago Cubs and the Atlanta Braves, the man was well over 500. A couple of times he was 600, 700, 800 in the win-loss percentage. His ERA, his highest was only his rookie year, 5.5. Bro, the Atlanta Braves won the division 13 years in a row. He was part of one of a stable of pitchers for the Atlanta Braves. That was just a constant rotation. You know, you remember growing up watching the Atlanta Braves on TBS Sports Network, him striking people out and just walking on the mound. How many wins did they have year after year after year? I think their worst year was 89, and they still won the division. Greg Maddox would have been able to strike out Mike Trout and all these soft hitters in the millennial age. (laughs) He feels some type of way about that one. All right. All right, next round. Oh, Alex, you go um, first, and then Mike, you up next. All right, so I'm going to ask the question twice, all right? All right. Name a forward, NBA forward from 1990 till 2005 that would win the All-Star Skills Competition. Not named LeBron James, Grant Hill, or Tracy McGrady. I'm going to ask that question again. Name a NBA forward that played between 1990 and 2005 that would win the M- the All Star Skills Competition. Not name LeBron James, Grant Hill, or Tracy McGrady. Alex, you have up to 30 seconds to come up with the answer. I'm ready. Oh wow! Okay, let's go. Let's go now. Timmy, Tim Duncan. The man was a five-time MVP, five-time winner, multiple all-star. He's from the Cayman Islands. He didn't even start playing basketball. He was a swimmer. Went to Wake Forest. Somebody saw that he had some skills. Orlando botched it up because they didn't want his girlfriend on the airplane with him when he came to the visit. Went to San Antonio Spurs, got hooked up with Pop, won a couple of championships, won one for David Robinson so the Admiral didn't go out of the game ringless. Uh, multifaceted skills. The man, six foot eleven. all right, real talk, he can hit the three, didn't trash talk him because he didn't need to. He let his game do the talking for him. Uh, dribbles up the court, he could be a point forward, didn't have to be a point forward, and I believe in his 19-year career, he holds a lot of San Antonio's records. Please tell me another forward better than LeBron James, Kevin Garnett. See, I gave you one. Dirk Nowitzki and Timmy. I rest my case. 
I like his energy. <laughs> All right. TJ, let's go now. Well, thanks, thanks for giving me one, even though I didn't need it. The correct answer is Scottie Pippen, obviously. The ultimate Batman, the ultimate uh, utility player. Actually was a point four and did bring the, the uh, ball up the court plenty of times. Who knows what his career would have been like had, had the phantom call uh, against John Starks against Nick not happen. Pippen would have been probably would have beat uh, Houston that year. Because they were still rolling, and he was the ultimate leader of that team. The dude uh, has, I don't know how many assists, uh, average about, I think about eight assists a game or something like that. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Scottie Pippen. All right. This is the last round. This might be, this might decide um, the battle. Might, I mean, TJ, you go up first, and Alex, you follow. All right. Name the most underrated Dallas Cowboys player since 1990 not named Emmitt Smith or Moose Johnson just y'all want to be slick with the Emmitt but I'm going to say it again <laughs> name the most underrated Dallas Cowboys player since 1990 not named Emmitt Smith or Moose Johnson TJ you have up to 30 seconds to come up with your answer I'm ready. All right. This might be the fastest battleground ever. All right, TJ, let's go now. I'm going to go with the one of the, the – actually, one of the, I'll go ahead and say one of the greatest tight ends of all time, Jason Witten. Like, this this guy, for what he does, is, is able to block and the type of uh, catches that he has and has been the uh, dominant player that he has been. Uh, over his years and the reason why I say that is because when everybody brings up tight end his name hardly ever gets mentioned it's always Tony G and for good reason it's always Gronk also good reason even now it's Kelsey but this dude has held it down in the teeth uh, at the tight end position for countless years not only can he catch and has big catches in game he's also an outstanding blocker and a better blocker than even some of the names I just mentioned. So I'm going to go with uh, Jason Witt just because he doesn't get his uh, just deserves. All right, Alex, it's on you. Let's go now. You know how you saw Dewey Cox and he's like the wrong kid died? Well, he picked the wrong tight end. Jay Novacek, Dallas Cowboys, 1990 to 1996. He came off of a lousy Cardinal squad to win not one, not two, but three championships with the Dallas Cowboys being Troy Aikman's security blanket. By the way, if you didn't know, 22 of his 30 career touchdowns came when he was in that star in blue with the Dallas Cowboys. I believe the man got 3,500 yards in his six-year career with the Dallas Cowboys, and he was always open. Before there was Gronk, before there was Kelsey, before there was Witten. There was Jay Novacek. For a while, people were talking about Dwight Clark and Jay Novacek because San Francisco and Dallas, for you youngins who don't remember, were always battling in the late 80s and early 90s. You said underrated. You said player that didn't get the respect he deserves. That screams Jay Novacek. Ask Emmett Smith, Michael Irvin, Alvin Harper, or Troy Aikman. It's Jay Novacek. All right, that's it, fellas. I need you. I mean, people who were watching, I need your votes. YouTube, Facebook. Uh, hey, y'all, listen on the radio. Text me, DM me, put it on the chat, whatever. I need your votes. Who do you think won? I want to thank our contestants. First off, uh, Alex, man, appreciate you for coming on. How was it, man? How did you like it? I, I like this. This allows you to, you know, speak your knowledge of the game. You know, there's no trash talking. You got to know what the hell you're talking about. I like it. <laughs> right. Um, and TJ, uh, we appreciate you coming on. I, I want to say both of you are, are very giving. I mean, <laughs> TJ said Greg Maddox. Then Alice gave him <laughs> Kevin Durant. I'm like, what's going on? Are they, are they, are they playing with us? But no, what's up, TJ, man? Um, anything to say? Hey, man, I always appreciate it. I always love coming on, man. I always like the competition, man. Looking forward to being in the next round. 
All right. All right. I need your votes, ladies and gentlemen. I need your votes. We will play this throughout the week to, um, you know, get more fan voting. So um, you'll see this That was a good one. Uh, Yes, it was. All right. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. Have you been looking for a radio station that gives you sports? I don't believe it. Oh, it's a touchdown. Entertainment. Are you not entertained? And other special interest talk shows. Well, isn't that special? All on one app. Yo, that's dope. What app is that? It's the real 1100 AM app for WWE. Grab it for free in your Google Play or Apple App Store today. This is Charlie Batch, 15-year NFL veteran, two-time Super Bowl champion, and you are listening to the Three Point Conversion. Three Point Conversion. 